You're listening to the Our Eerie Podcast with Lydia Leith, Ivana Paisley, and Marty Wachuku. This series will bring citizens, entrepreneurs, activists, politicians, artists, and thought leaders to the table for a frank discussion around societal issues facing our post-industrial city and the United States at large. Take a seat. We have a special guest today. We have Caesar Westbrook. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> <laughs> wow, is it the same thing? Thank you. Dad. I'm um, I'm excited to be here and uh, to be a part of it. So for sure. Well, Caesar, I'm personally familiar with you because there was um, maybe a year or two ago I went to a gallery night and your work was displayed at I actually don't remember the name of the business, but it's right next to PACA. At, at Attic Rehab. Yeah, yeah. They're no, they're no longer there, which is unfortunate. But yeah, um, that was their first. I was there. They just had a space open up next to them that they, you know, got re, like redecorated and everything like that. And so I was like their first artist in that new space. So um, wow. yeah, it was, it was a really nice space. Um, really good show too. Yeah, I remember. I think that night you had a piece. You had a few artists, I believe, you portrayed. I think I remember Prince. Mm -hmm. and maybe one other female artist I can't think of who particularly oh um Aretha Franklin yeah 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 I thought it was her but I didn't want to be wrong oh you're fine yeah it was Aretha um I did a like a colorful abstract piece of her and it was shortly after she had passed um it was like that that fought that upcoming fall um and so that's when I did it but yeah I decided to put it in the show okay well for um We've never really met in real life. This is our first time meeting, and I'm sure Lydia and Devon, you all have I don't think I've ever met Caesar West. I mean, Caesar, I was going to say his whole name. I don't think I've ever okay. met him in like person. Like, personally, in person, I don't think so either, no. No. So, no. Caesar, tell the folks a little bit about yourself. Who are you? Where are you from? Sure. How did you get to be who you are now? For sure. So, my name is Caesar Westbrook, and you guys are more than welcome to call me that as well. Um, I'm from Lancaster, Pennsylvania, so it's about five hours from here, Eastern PA, near like Harrisburg, like towards Philly. Um, so I've been here for about six years now, a little over six years. Uh, my son is what brought me here. And um, and yeah, um, I've been like a full time. I was a full time artist completely about three years ago. Um, you know, I was working a normal job. I was working actually at like Lowe's. Um, which actually most people don't know, they pay really well and everything like that. But I was in that position where it was just like, I want to try to do something. I want to try to do this myself. I want to, you know, I want to try to jump off the cliff and take a chance. And um, it was real like gutsy because at the time, like I said, I was making consistent money and, you know, I have a son. So I was like, I don't know if I should do it. But I was like, man, forget it. I don't want to get older and be like, I should have did it. I should have tried to do it. You know what I mean? For and sure. then I did um, let go of my job and just decided to go full time. Like it forces you to go hard. You don't have any other choice. You know what I mean? So I was just like super motivated just off the fact that I no longer had a consistent stream of income. And so I was just like, man, I was like, let's go. Like, and I was just so, so motivated. And then just knocking stuff, you know, out left and right, doing a lot of commissions, but also still trying to find time to do stuff that I like to do and I want to do. Cause that's a, that's a hard balance that I, that I'm finding with other artists as well uh-huh. is doing, you know, commissions and pieces that people contact you for. And, you know, Hey, I want a piece of my, my son or my family or whatever. And I'm all for that. I want to do stuff for other people too. But as an artist, you want to try to, you know, still put out your own, energy in your own work and you know in your own depictions as well and that's where I feel like I'm strongest um and so just trying to find that balance and I think I did um but just so many things started to turn over for me and um it it, the way that things happen I like I still to this day I don't know how a lot of it happened um and I'm you know I'm I'm a big believer in God. And I just, you know, I give it to him because I really don't know how a lot of this stuff happened. Like I could sit here and tell you, share a couple of stories with you guys and it just doesn't make sense, but it, it's, it's how it happened. And I'm just embracing it and riding the wave and just enjoying every minute of it. 
I was just listening to a podcast this morning, Lit literally was talking, the was a young lady talking about her experience mm -hmm. and her experience was super similar. She was like, I had, I was at a fork in the road, you know, mm -hmm. and she was like, on one end, I had this corporate job, you know, I was making good money, making, you know, I was getting awards and all that. She's like, but I wanted another thing to fulfill me. And I wanted to be my, I wanted to be a creator. And she's like, really? I realize I'm a creator. Mm -hmm. And she's like, the other end was taking that leap of faith yeah. and going in not knowing yeah. in, in the unknown. And she was like, when I decided to do the unknown, go yeah. that route, she's like, the doors have been open for her. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she was like, I was able to experience the things that I really, my heart desired. So that's mm -hmm. just interesting when you're like, you know, I had to take that leap of faith. Yeah. I had to go and do that and look at, look at like what has, what yeah. has come yeah. for your, for yourself. So that's, yeah. that's deep. That's really deep. I, I like, so like, I, I do want to share a quick story because I know like if people are going to watch this, I feel like some stuff that happens to me, you know, happens to anybody, happens to you, like share it because there might be somebody, yes. who, maybe not the same situation, but a very similar one. And, you know, it's going to give them the courage to kind of, you know, just keep chucking away. But um, right after I had quit, I had my, that's that this show in Attic Rehab that um, that you're referring to. So my show, my, my work was in there the entire month. I can't remember exactly what month the show was, but. The night of the show, one piece of mine was bought. It wasn't one of my more expensive pieces, but it was, you know, it was a piece of mine. I was like, all right, that's cool. So the whole month goes by and then nothing else sold because the curator never contacted me or anything like that. And so the day that I was supposed to go pick my stuff up, um, she contacts me and says, hey, Caesar, I have another artist coming in to set up for their show. Do you think you can come and pick up your stuff or whatever? And I was like, yeah, sure. I was like, no problem. I was like, I'll be there like 11. And so 11 comes around and something came up. I can't remember what it was, but I couldn't go and get my stuff. So I contacted her. I was like, Hey, I can't make it right now at 11. Can I come in about an hour, hour and a half, maybe two hours? So like, yeah, that's fine. Just anytime today is fine. I was like, all right, cool. So I come back two hours later around like one. Well, I was, I was headed, I was going to head back around one. She calls me and says, Hey, Caesar, I have a guy that just came in here and loves your work and wants to buy three pieces off the wall. And I'm just like, wow. and like, they're, they're like, so the Prince one that she referred to, um, and it was like two of my abstract pieces. Um, and I would just like, get out of here. You know what I mean? Like to take us, my stuff was in there for 30 days. For 29 of them days, nobody touched it. You know what wow. I mean? Nobody said anything. And if I would have went when I was supposed to go, that dude never would have saw my stuff. He never would have saw my stuff. And so, <laughs> Grace of God, whatever happened, I can't remember. I had this, something came up and I get a call 15 minutes before I'm supposed to go pick up my stuff. This dude buys three of my pieces. He has a condo, which is right down the street. I actually go take the pieces with him down to his condo, up to his, 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 his place, which was beautiful. And he already has beautiful artwork in there. And he already had the spots of where he was gonna put my stuff and everything, really cool guy. And um, that's another thing as an artist, like where your stuff is going matters too. You know what I mean? You want your stuff to go somewhere where it's going to be appreciated and where, you know, where it's going to yeah. be, uh, you want a home for your piece. You don't want it just to go anywhere. And so that whole thing was just like, that whole day I was like, I was messed up. Like, you know what I mean? I was like, that was crazy. You know, like, I don't know. It was a, it was a crazy feeling, but those, that's one of them stories. I'm just like, I'll never forget it ever. Like I'll share with my kid and like, I, you know, that's the story that in my journey of becoming an artist, that's one that's, that's, that will always be told, you know what I mean? So, but yeah. That's, that's super dope. cool. I feel like that's such a good example of like when life is like, when you're just doing the right thing, like things just fall into place in such like, whether you call it like divine intervention or yeah. divine timing or whatever you want to call it, like everything aligns and like, yeah. it's easy. Yeah. It's no longer a struggle. It's no longer yeah. like having to push yourself, you know, through something like once, once yeah. you've gotten over that threshold, then it's like, sure. it just exactly. is That's so cool. crazy. I want to know, you know, I think we're hearing the, the present, mm -hmm. what brought you to what, when did you know that you had this skill, this gift um, of an artist of being a creator? You know, sure. when did you know that? Um, well, I was like younger, like I would always like draw and stuff in, in school. Um, I was a kid in the back of class drawing and sometimes not paying attention kind of thing. You know what I mean? And I went to school, I went to IEP. Um, I went for art education because I love kids and I like working with kids and I love art. So I was like, shoot, let's just kill two birds with one stone. 
let's do art, ed art education. And then silly me, I changed my major like more than halfway through. Um, I don't know, I, I don't even know why. I just wasn't feeling at the time and I just wanted to be done with school. I understand. Um, and so, yeah, so I graduated, got out of school. Um, and my focus at the time was woodworking and furniture design. And a lot of people don't even know that. Um, I don't know if you guys know who Patrick Fisher is, but he works um, at Erie Arts and Culture and he's in, like, He's the reason a lot of things are happening in Erie art wise. You know what I mean? He's a, so you'll hear his name soon. But anyway, um, he didn't even know that. And I've been working with him for a little while now. But um, yeah, I graduated and I didn't even start painting until after I graduated. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Like I, like I took a, I took a class like I, 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 I mostly would like I would draw. That was my thing. And like color pencil and stuff like that. But painting, I took a class, but it wasn't my focus. It wasn't like the thing that I was trying to do. So I graduated and I was just like, I don't know. I just got real curious one, like one, one year. And I was like, let me just try to paint, see what it, like, I think I know how it works, but I got to try it and see if it's the way I think it works in my mind. Like as far as blending colors and getting things to, you know, whatever. So I kind of taught myself, even though I did take a class, I learned more from my peers in class than I did from my professors. Mm. Like I would see what she was doing and what he was doing and how he got it to look like this. And I was like, oh, those are cool techniques. This is, this is, this is cool, you know what I mean? But then you apply it to yourself and you just do it your own way. And so, but yeah, I didn't start painting until after I, after I graduated. I moved up here and I, I, I did a couple of small things and like a bunch of people around me, like family and close friends were like, man, you should like take that serious, like try to like take it for real. And I was like, I mean, I don't know, we'll see, I don't know, or whatever. And so I did a couple of pictures and then like, um, I didn't even get a Facebook until like four years ago. Like I just started putting stuff up and then like a lot of people gravitated toward them. Like, did you do this? And I was like, you know, like, yeah, like, you know, um, and like, I could see that like, a lot of people liked it, like my style or whatever. And then that's when I was just like, shoot, like maybe, maybe I got something. And like, I really wanted to keep uh, like doing woodworking, but I couldn't because I didn't have access to the machinery. You know what I mean? Like at my school, there's a whole wood shop that has all the machines you could think about and all everything you'll ever need. But then I graduated, I don't have that anymore. You know what I mean? So it's just like, it's not something you can go pick up at Lowe's. It ain't happening. You know what I mean? So um, I was just like, let me just revert to, or convert to something else and try this painting and something else. And then it slowly just transitioned into that. And then I just, you know, took it and ran with it. And then now this is where I'm at. So. Wow. <laughs> Nobody yeah. just it sounds like you're pretty well-rounded art-wise though you got the wood you got the paint you got the pencil art yeah i do pencil art so it's in a at iep they require you to take so many different mediums for your mm -hmm. major so i took everything i took jewelry and metals i took fibers i took sculpture i took ceramics i took everything i mean a lot some of them i didn't really like so i only took it for that one class just to check the box and say i did it you know what i mean mm -hmm. Um, but some of the stuff was really interesting and I would probably actually, you know, further if I could. But like I said, at that point, I was just like, all right, let me take this class so I can get done and get out of here. You know what I mean? But it was a lot like every medium you can think of. They require you to do it, which I, now looking back at it, I'm like, that was so beneficial for me. You know what I mean? I wasn't just one track minded and just like trying to stick to just this one thing. It forced you to do so many other things. Wow. You know what I mean? So um, looking back at it now it was a great thing. Well, since we're in like an audio form and some people may have never seen your work before, could you, with your words, paint a picture of what some of your work looks like? And then later, like talk about where we might be able to find some of your work. Yeah. So you want me to just like express or just like verbally Ever? express? Um, yeah. Let me see. I just did a piece uh, not too long ago. Um, and... So I can go through the processes. How about that? Yeah. Is that, that okay? So like uh, for this piece, uh, it was around when uh, all this, like Corona just hit, uh, there was a lot of like, you know, killings, like racial things going on. Um, and I had this image of a king in my mind. Um, and I don't like my pieces to just be like, you know, like just plain. So what I usually do is I paint on a nice, the background that I usually do on most of them is like a nice um, soft, like but highlighty color. Um, and on this particular piece, I wanted it to be very vibrant and colorful um, and just speak through the color itself. 
Um, so I used a lot of purple because it was royalty. So I wanted it to have a royal feel. So I made sure I, I added purple. Um, and But I also wanted it to depict the pain that we were going through at the time. So the look on his face uh, was kind of like a struggle, but like pain. Um, but his outer glow was still showing that he was strong and, you know, that he was persevering and, you know, just, you know, really still strong to get through whatever it was. Mm -hmm. And so um, his, his actual, his, his physical stat stature itself says that, you know, he's in pain and in struggle, but his actual, the color and the vibrancy of, of everything, the crown, the jewels that I also included in the crown, um, that speaks a different language and it tells an entirely different story. And that's pretty much how I like to go about most of my work is the image itself is something, but, you know, the colors and the other things that are added into it, um, you know, tell something else. So it kind of brings it all together. That's amazing. That sounds really cool. I really want to see that. Can I find that like on Actually, book or something? It? Hold on. I have it. On Sea West it. Collections. Yeah, that's where could. it's at. <laughs> um, it's, my, it's on my Instagram. Actually. Yes. Like, it's one of my most recent pictures. Okay. One of my favorites um, is, uh, I believe it. Uh, you had named it Perfectly Imperfect. Okay, yeah. The black woman. And she mm -hmm. was actually on the front of the Erie Reader. Yeah, I yeah. Oh, what, yeah. Yeah, I that so, one, yeah. yeah she had the... Oh, she Thank had the you. head wrap, everything. Yeah, I was like, wait, he painted me? Like, yeah. like no, I'm just playing. No, that really was a nice photo, though. That was a beautiful photo. I I mean, a beautiful uh, painting. I was like, yo, so I actually have that in my living room. Yeah, oh, I have the Erie Reader. I yeah. saved that. So that's, that's awesome. one of my favorites of yours. Thank you. Well, speaking yeah. of the representation, like when I saw it, I'm like, oh, my God, the Erie Reader has me, Devana. Uh -huh. <laughs> and that was, at all. That's so <laughs> awesome to like hear you guys say that because um, I want that. I want somebody to see my work and see them in my work. That's yes. my whole goal. You know what I mean? Black, white, I don't care who you are, what you are. Mm -hmm. I love everybody. So I want to try to depict that in my work. You know what yes. I mean? If you see my work and you feel yourself in it, check. I did what I'm supposed to do. You know what I mean? And like, I try to make my work as universal as possible. And that goes back to when I said, I like doing my own kind of work. Like there's nothing wrong with me doing personal pieces for other people. I'm, I'm with that all day long. But when I have that gap where I can go in and do my own thing, like I go in to kill it. Like, and I don't like, I can't wait for times where I don't have nothing to do for nobody else because in my mind, I'm like, in these next two weeks, I'm about to kill this painting in my mind. Like, mm -hmm. it's crazy. You use vibrant colors too. That's what I like about it. Like it captures a, a lot of like, yeah. even just the curvature of different things. Like even, I mean, there's one that you had of, of a woman and you had it, she, her, the way well, yeah. that it, it was beautiful. I was like, I yo. I still right? have that one. It's, cra with the, it's, it's crazy because she has diamonds and everything in her, like in her, in her necklace. I wow. actually like 3D, like it's a 3D, like rhinestones and on yes. her bracelet and in her necklace. So yeah. Wow. But I like, I wanted it to be like sexy and elegant at the same time, not too revealing. Yeah. But, you know what I mean? But it, the color, I wanted to be very vibrant. You yeah, know it was I mean? dope. Would yeah. you consider your work pop art or would you consider it like what what style? That's a great question because yes, but not fully. Yeah. I like, a, I, I love abstract, but I love realism. Like if I can paint something like realistic, but I love pop art. So like I kind of try to mix it all in. I try to do all of it, not on every piece, but like most of them. And so I think with those kind of pieces, because that piece and the Aretha Franklin, mm -hmm. they're kind of similar. And the King one that I just did, they have the same kind of like color scheme. And I kind of try to twist that, um, all three of those phases into those pieces. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I'm interested now in education because yeah. you said you're in, you know, you, you're, you're, you're working within the school district. Yeah. That's what I've last uh, read about you is where you, you know, you were, you were working in the school district. You were actually on the, I think the track of when they were looking for, um, uh, can you tell us about it? They were looking for young, you know, obviously young black teachers because, yeah. you know, you're struggling. So let us know your experience with that. The, the way that happened is also another funny story um, that I'll just tell really quickly. I did the, um, I did the mural downtown or at the uh, Dobbins Landing. Um, the, the real colorful abstract one. So if you're on the top of the tower and you look down mm -hmm. um, the platform, I, I did that one last year. And then it was in August and it was hot as ever. I was outside for like seven straight days. And then the very next week was the chalk walk for Celebrate Erie. And so I did that. And that was another like three days of, in the sun. It was crazy. 
And then I won that. I really like, I, I never did chalk before. So the lady, I, the, 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 the people who represented me, every, you get represented, you get a sponsor. Everybody gets a sponsor. Okay. The Port Authority was my sponsor. Hmm. So when I went and sat down with the lady from the Port Authority, 90% of me wanted to tell her no because I never worked with chalk before. I never did chalk, nothing ever. But I went with the 10% that said yes. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna try something new. Let's go do it, you know, whatever. Chalk wall comes around and the first like half an hour, I'm just like, I'm not like, I'm, I, I, can, I know what I want to do. I have it in my mind. I know how to, you know, I have it down on the ground, whatever. But like I've seen people's in prior years and it looks so like smooth and vibrant and everything. I was like, I don't know how they did that. So I was like, forget it. I'm gonna try my own thing. And I broke the chalk down into powder and then I mixed it with water and this one solution that they give you. And then, and I made it into like a paint. And so once I did that, I was like, oh, it's over. I was like, <laughs> I was like, I like, I found my niche. Like I've, 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 I've turned this into what I like. So I made this work for me. Mm-hmm. And so I painted it fast forward. I ended up winning it the very next couple of days later, the lady who brought me in on the project from the port authority, she's very good friends with uh, a principal in the district. And this principal actually came by where I was, where I was doing the chalk walk one day. And she was like, you know, she introduced herself, but I didn't think nothing of it. A lot of people stopped by or whatever. And so um, that next week she said, Hey, I have a friend who's a principal at, and I cannot remember the school. She wants to know if you'd be interested, interested in a teaching position. And I was like, yeah, like, absolutely. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so um, she was like, okay. She was like, I'll set up, here's her email, you know, blah, blah, blah. Fast forward. I didn't get into that school, but I got into where I'm at now, which is McKinley Elementary. Nice. So I'm the art teacher at McKinley Elementary. Um, and long story short, that all happened from me going with 10% of yes and wow. not going with 90% of no. Because if I would have told her no, that lady would have never saw me. That, na- that lady would have never, you know, it never would have happened. Like none of it would have happened. And so that's how that happened. But I love it. I love teaching these kids. My first day of teaching, which was last year in October, I got there a month late because of like clearances. I was waiting for clearances to come through. And my first day of teaching, I go into class and the kids come in and like the kids are like looking around at me because for, <laughs> for a whole month they had substitutes. Yeah. So they didn't have any consistency. They didn't have anything stable you know it was just like a teacher here you know mm-hmm. and a teacher here for a couple of days or whatever but anyway i get i come in there and to me i mean to them i'm another sub and they're like they're like are you our teacher and i was like yeah and then and then in the back of the room another kid was like you're gonna be here for the whole year <laughs> i was like yeah and like they all like celebrated it was like the craziest thing oh. was like, yeah i was in another i did another like you know interview like then i told this story and it's like every time i tell it, it was like i felt responsible at that point in time, I was like, all right, this is bigger than me, way bigger than me, you know? Yeah. And so, um, yeah, I just like, I was like, I feel responsible to, you know, I have a job now because these kids mm-hmm. are like, they looking at me and, you know, looking up to me. Mm-hmm. They'll, they, they've never obviously seen, you know, let's be real, a black teacher, mm-hmm. uh, let alone an art teacher, you know what I mean? And I know that I, one, I love working with kids and I was like, I, I'm in a position to, introduce things in a different way to them and so I'm about to do it you know what I mean and I love it I love it so much because when I was young I didn't have I didn't have anybody like that like at all you know what I mean so I want to be that person to them and how the universe works I know school for it (laughs) wait what'd you say I said look how the universe works you went to school for a change of major but still ended up it's crazy it's Mm. really because at the time like even though she asked me, I did say, yeah. But in the back of my mind, I was like, wait, I didn't finish. My degree isn't in art, art education. I was like, but I got a lot of education credits in art. Oh. So what, I, what ended up happening is I got emergency certified. Yes. I did have a lot of credits. I, I, you know, I, did, I did have a lot of them. There was like two classes and a um, student teaching that I didn't do, which, like I said, it was stupid for me to switch majors. I was just so over it, like, and whatever. But um, but yeah, I had enough to, for them to get me in there. I had all my clearances because I've done other works with kids and stuff and youth, um, like through the YMCA and all this other stuff. So I had all my other clearances and everything like that. 
And then it just worked. It just, it fell right into place. Like it was like, I'm telling you, like, I cannot lie to you. Stuff that's happened to me in my last four years, five years of becoming an artist. Like some of it, you won't believe it. Like I wow. still don't believe it. I don't. I just believe go. Believe it. Because <laughs> it's yeah, happening. Yeah, right. It's happening, <laughs> but it's like, I don't it's question happening. it. Any, I don't, this, the difference is back then I was questioning it. I don't question it no more. Mm-hmm. Like I just like, whatever, like keep it moving. Let's roll. Ride, ride the wave is my, I have a saying, it's called ride the wave. Yes. You ride the wave. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. that's it. You've been listening to the Our Eerie podcast, the voice of reason in the fog of post-industrial America. Next week, we're bringing you part one of our conversation with Karen Thomas, co-owner of Pineapple Eddy Southern Bistro. Continue the conversation at facebook.com slash Our Eerie series. This podcast is produced by John C. Lyons, Marty Nwachuku, Devana Paisley, and Lydia Lee. Funding provided by Erie Arts and Culture. Music by Corey Cook. We appreciate you for listening to the Our Eerie podcast. Peace.